you might as well just wear a big sign on your head that says, I have a problem with pride. And I think it's my business to run the world and to tell everybody what they should be doing. Nobody knows as much as I do. I'm telling you what, I don't think there's anything that's more difficult to come by than humility. Proverbs 6, 16, these six things the Lord hates. <laughs> and the seventh, was an, is, seventh one is an abomination. The seventh one is sowing discord among your brethren. Sowing discord among your brethren also comes from pride. But the very first thing on this list that God hates is a proud look. The spirit that makes one overestimate himself and underestimate others. Wow. It basically means we think we're better than other people. Many whole church denominations think they're better than other church denominations. <laughs> There's nothing that's sadder to me than to hear a preacher stand up in the pulpit and put down another denomination. It hurts me when I hear preachers make cracks about the televangelist. They don't know me. They don't know anything about me. <laughs> they don't have any idea what kind of responsibility it takes to be on this much TV and actually believe God for the money to pay the bills. And the only reason why people make comments like that is pride and jealousy, which also comes from pride. Well, those prosperity preachers, I wish that somebody would tell me what that is. I've gotten that label, and I don't know why everybody calls me that, because I preach the whole counsel of the Word of God. I do believe that God wants to bless people, but I think He wants us to grow up and mature in Him and be fruitful citizens of the kingdom of God. So we need to stop labeling people just because they're not like us. All the division in the body of Christ, which has so terribly weakened us. Can you imagine what would happen if Baptists and Methodists and Lutherans and Catholics and Pentecostals and on and on and on all really loved each other and were in agreement and would work together? United we stand, divided we fall. And why are we divided? Pride. My way is the only way. Can I tell you a secret? I don't think any of us have got it all right. We're going to all find out a whole bunch of things about our doctrines when we get to heaven. We fight and argue over things that I'm sure don't make one bit of difference to God. Yeah, I don't even want to get started on that at all. God hates that stuff. He hates it. You don't need to judge somebody just because they're not like you. I don't need to judge somebody because they're not like me. In case you haven't noticed, God likes variety. And we're all, we've all got our own little brand of strangeness. Hello? My goodness. Matthew chapter 11 is such a beautiful chapter beginning in verse 28. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will ease, relieve, and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, humble, lowly in heart. And you will find rest, relief, ease, refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. <laughs> I'll tell you what. A a bad case of pride is hard on you. Because you just spend all your time judging and criticizing and having to be right about everything. Having to have an opinion about everything. Talking way too much. Telling everybody what you think, you think, you think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Let me tell you what I think. Let me tell you what I think. Let me tell you what I think. You know, occasionally I'll go to lunch with a bunch of preachers and 
years and years ago, you know, I began to notice that none of us could even hardly eat trying to tell each other what we're doing. <laughs> well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. My church doing this. My church doing that. <laughs> And one day I felt like when I went to lunch, the Lord just said, no, I just want you to not say anything unless, you know, until somebody asks you what you're doing. I found out by the end of lunch, they weren't the least bit interested in me. <laughs> Nobody gave a rip what I was doing. You know, so often we get together and we're not interested in one another. We're just trying to impress each other. Whoo, I'm preaching good. Isn't that the truth? We're just trying to impress each other. My goodness. Name dropping and telling everybody all the important people we know and all this and that and that and something else. Why don't you just keep some stuff to yourself? <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you that are younger and of lesser rank, and that doesn't mean that you're beneath somebody. It just means maybe you hold a, a different position than somebody else. Be subject to the elders, the ministers, and the spiritual guides of the church. Everybody wants to own their own business and do their own thing. And if you get corrected in a church about something, first thing you're going to do is go find yourself another place to go. <laughs> And if somebody doesn't put you in a position week one, then they're not hearing from God because you're so talented and they should be using you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and let Him lift you up. Let Him exalt you. I remember when I first started teaching, and, you know, God gifted me to do this, and I, you know, I could just always teach. And I was good at it. I'm a gifted communicator. Well, I was teaching a home Bible study, 20, 25 people. If we had 30, that was a huge crowd. And that was all I was doing, but I could pretty much teach then just like I can now, except I didn't have any sense. <laughs> if you think I say some stuff now, you should have heard me back then. And when I started teaching the Bible, <laughs> I'm telling you the honest God's truth, I would sit in my living room floor, and I had on short shorts, I mean as short as I could get them, and I'd sit there and blow smoke in everybody's face while I was teaching the Word. I mean, it would get so smoky in the room, you couldn't even hardly see the people, but I was anointed. And people would come. Now, right now, there's some religious person just sputtering and popping and saying, well, well, I just don't. <laughs> well, the Bible says that God uses the weak and the foolish things of the world. He chooses what the world would ignore and reject and throw away. And I can tell you when God called me to do this, I don't know that I knew more than three people that actually thought that I had any brains at all and that I was hearing from God. I had people laugh at me. I had people reject me because I was in a raw farm. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I did have, I loved God. I loved God and I had, I had like, I was gutsy. I would just step out and try it. Well, obviously, you know, I'm not still preaching in short shorts and blowing smoke in everybody's face. <laughs> God dealt with me about that in His time, and it didn't take long, and that was something that was in the past in my life. When I first started teaching, I didn't have wisdom, and I didn't understand why God wasn't promoting me fast. I can remember listening to preachers on TV and thinking, I can preach better than that. <laughs> oh, now don't act, don't even act like 
that you've never sat out there and looked at the worship leader and thought, well, I can sing better than that. Because I know you have. I didn't know any better. See, I thought that gifting was all that mattered. It took me another few years to learn that God will give many people a gift that can take them somewhere, but they don't have enough character to keep them there once they get there. So we have a lot of charisma without character in the world today. Somebody who can stand up and impress a crowd, but behind the scenes they're not living the very life that they tell other people to live. Well, you know, I wasn't too interested in listening to people older than me either. Ah, oh, you, oh, you, that old lady, what does she know? <laughs> and that is the worst attitude that you can possibly have. I mean, when you get around somebody that's been walking with the Lord 30, 40 years, I mean, you ought to keep your mouth shut and listen to everything they say. You ought to hang on to every word that they say. Watch how they behave. Watch what they do. Go into every situation with the attitude, I'm going to learn something from you. You've been alive longer than me. You've had more experiences than me. And I want to learn everything that I can possibly learn. We need a change in our society in respect for authority and respect for people that have lived longer than we have. God will teach us through anybody. He'll teach you through a child. He had to speak to one prophet through a donkey. Because <laughs> the guy was too bullheaded to get it any other way. Pride's a terrible thing. It will rob you of the ministry God has for you. It will keep God from promoting you in life. But it can be overcome through the mercy and the grace of God. So, you that are younger... Be subject to the elders, the ministers, and the spiritual guides of your church. And that doesn't mean that they get to run your life. That's not what it means. It just means be respectful. Giving them due respect and yielding to their counsel. Clothe, apron yourselves, all of you, with humility. This says put on humility like it's a garment. And that doesn't mean you go around all the time with your head hanging down. Oh, I'm just nothing and nobody. I'll tell you where humility and pride is seen quicker than any place, I believe, is in how you treat people. I believe that. When we came to the church here to do the one night of their women's conference that they had several months ago, and then again now this time. You know, Dino and his family in the church here are very giving people, and he always gives us gifts when we come. But you know something that I've noticed? He doesn't only give me and Dave a gift. He gives the people that travel with me gifts. The guy that drives the car. My secretary. Her husband. A couple of other people that are with us. I love people that don't just pay attention to who they think is important. Come on now. But they make sure... That they honor everybody. The Bible says give respect to all people. When we're just trying to impress people, all it is is feeding pride. Don't ever be the kind of person that just plays up to who you think is important while you ignore everybody else, the little people. I remember when I was in the helps ministry in my church and I wasn't preaching or ministering yet. The pastor sent us one time, we were having a camp meeting and he sent us to pick up a well-known Musician. I mean, he was like big back then. And he wouldn't talk to us. He was so rude to us. And it was, it was just like, it was even such an eye opener, you know, because you respect these people. They have these big positions. But then to get with him behind the scenes, it was like, <sighs> but you know what? In later years, he had some of the most terrible trouble in his life and in his ministry. And I remember by then, we had, God had promoted us 
And we, our ministry was quite well known. And I remember him now asking us for help. I think, I mean, and I'm just trying to talk about the principle of God here. You know, here's somebody who thought he was better than we were. And actually was rude to us and mistreated us. And God has his way of balancing things out, if you know what I mean. How many of you get my meaning? That's why the Bible says you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, God will put you in the right position for you, but he'll put you in a position that you can maintain with integrity and honesty. I wanted to be a big preacher when I was only teaching a home Bible study, but I didn't realize that God was doing me the greatest favor he could possibly do me by not promoting me into a more public position because I wasn't ready. I thought I was ready, but I wasn't ready. And usually when you think you're ready, you're not ready. And when you think you're not ready, you are. The Bible says, don't put a new convert into a position of leadership, lest they become stupefied with pride. <laughs> you know, position can make you stupid. And all of a sudden, now you're better than everybody else. Just a little bit of success, a little bit of growth. It's amazing how it ruins so many people. There's nothing more important to me in my life than treating people right. That is number one for me, treating people right, showing people respect, and especially sometimes going after on purpose who we would think would be the little guy, but really is not the little guy to God. It's very important to me that I'm not a phony, that I don't preach something I'm not living, and that I treat all people well, and when I don't, then I need to humble myself and go back and apologize and make it right. Come on, you can clap louder than that. Now, still in 1 Peter 5, 5, we're getting a lot of lessons out of this. Clothe yourselves with humility so that its covering cannot possibly be stripped from you. With freedom from pride and arrogance toward one another. For God sets himself against the proud. <laughs> My gosh. God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful. And he opposes, frustrates, and defeats them. But he gives grace, favor, and blessing to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves. Demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation. And all that really means is to have an attitude, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm as good as everybody else, but I'm no better than anybody else. I'm not below them. I'm not above them. I'm just in Christ. And anything I can do, I can do it because God's given me the gift to do it. And I don't need to act like it's my own and it's something I've done. I just need to be thankful and grateful for what God enables me to do. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That in due time, He might exalt you. Now one of the ways that pride manifests is in us trying to do things that only God can do. We need to let God be God. You are not Holy Ghost Junior, believe it or not. <laughs> Your ministry gift is not fault finder. You know, there's actually people who have ministries. And their ministry is to watch other ministries. And point out to the public what's wrong with them. I mean, I am sorry, but that is just the dumbest thing I have ever heard in my whole life. I would love for somebody to tell me where they find that. And oh, they cause so much trouble and heartache and even confusion for people. 
One of the things that I wasted, everybody say wasted. wasted. One of the things I wasted so much time on was trying to do things I couldn't do. <laughs> and the, one of those things was trying to change myself. You can't change yourself. Only God can change you. I would go to church and I'd hear a message on the mouth and I'd go home and decide I was going to be quiet and not say anything. <laughs> well, then I'd go to the other extreme and I wouldn't say anything and then I would get depressed and I didn't understand why I'd feel depressed because I was trying to do the right thing and God said, well, you've shut your mouth but nothing's changed inside. Yeah. Come on, that's a good message. Yeah. See, I could discipline myself to say, well, I'm just not going to talk. Then I can't get in any trouble. But it's the hidden man of the heart that God's concerned about. And the reason why we can't change ourselves without God's help is because all we can do is try to control this outward behavior, but God's got to get inside and work in us to change our heart motive. And so even if I would pull one weed in my life, another one would pop up somewhere else. Because I was still the same inside. God has to do the changing in us. So what we need to do is be on our knees before God saying, my God, I was convicted by that message last night. And Lord, I know that I need to change in that area. I am guilty, God. I repent. Please forgive me. And if you don't change me, God, I'm likely to stay this way forever. I quit praying all those, God, I promise you, if you'll just forgive me this one more time, God, I promise I'll never do it again. I don't even pray like that anymore. I say, God, I will definitely do it again if you don't do something. You can count on it, God. You can count on it. I'll definitely do it again if you don't help me. Oh, I struggled with myself and struggled with myself and struggled with myself and struggled with myself. And now I like myself with all my kinks and every, everything and just hallelujah. I just like it. <coughs> you know why I finally realized? God wasn't surprised by me. <laughs> he knew what he was getting when he got me. The second big thing that I tried to do that was so ridiculous was I tried to change my husband. <laughs> I know none of you do that. but Because <laughs> after all, you know, we're right and everybody else is wrong and they need to line up with our idea of what they ought to be. Isn't that correct? <laughs> my way or the highway. <laughs> my way or no way. I mean, we'd go out to try and buy some furniture, and he didn't like what I liked. And I would go, how could you possibly like that? Ooh, I had a mouth on me, man. I could cut somebody in half with a look. Like, Come on, come on, let's see your best. Let's see your best, you are stupid look. Let me see your best one. Like. Come on. You know, you didn't have to open your mouth a lot of times. It's just the, <laughs> or, or this one. things, you might as well just wear a big sign on your head that says, I have a problem with pride. <laughs> and I think it's my business to run the world and to tell everybody what they should be doing. Nobody knows as much as I do. Oh my gosh, we're having fun. Whew, hallelujah. Now, I just might as well tell you something. You're not going to get over a bad case of pride unless you study, 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 and pray, pray, pray. Amen? God wants to do so much for us, but we've got to humble ourselves under His mighty hand. Well, of all the Christian virtues to be sought after, we should seek to be humble, meek, gentle, and lowly because that is the nature of Jesus.
But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and, you know, taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. Well, so the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys? Uh, those gifts from Joyce Five Ministries. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have a Today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change. You can get healing. You can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. Alle boeken van Joyce Meyer staan overzichtelijk op een rijtje in een brochure. Geef nieuwe impulsen aan je dagelijks leven en bestel deze gratis brochure nu telefonisch op nummer 026 20 22 100. Vind je het moeilijk om te bidden? Te ingewikkeld? Bidden kan zoiets moois zijn. Praat met God eenvoudig over alles. Een boek van Joyce Meyer kan jou hierbij helpen. De kracht van een eenvoudig gebed. Leer hoe je met God over alles kunt praten. Je kunt het boek De kracht van een eenvoudig gebed nu bestellen via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of telefonisch op 026 20 22 100.